Good morning. Welcome. This is a public meeting of the Indiana Arts Commission Advisory Review Panel. We've convened to review the fiscal year 23 Arts Organization Support Grant Program applications. I'm Sonia Nash. I am located in the South Bend area and work at the Elkhart County Convention and Visitor Bureau and am today's IAC Review Panel Facilitator. Today is Monday, May the 2nd of 2022, and we are meeting online and streaming live for applicants and the public to observe. There's no contact between the panel and the audience about the disposition of the applicants before, during, or after the panel meeting today. This meeting will be recorded and be made available upon request. At this time, I will individually invite each of the panelists and then staff to introduce themselves. Panelists will state their name, their occupation, where they're from in our great state of Indiana, and the staff will state their title and role. But let's start with the panel first. I'll start by introducing each of them um, by their first name and allow them to share about their self. So first up, welcome, Anthony. Please introduce yourself. Tell us about where you're from. Hi, I'm Anthony Cert. Um, currently, I am the costume shop manager um, for the theater department at Purdue University. I also freelance uh, costume design around the state, um, and I am in West Lafayette. So can I say go Hoosiers or no? <laughs> no, definitely not. Just checking, Anthony. Okay, just checking. All right. Next up is Angie. Welcome, Angie. Tell us about yourself. Good morning. Angie Moore from Indianapolis. Um, I am a community leader and true lover of the arts, and my goal is to make sure that we can get arts in every community if possible. That's an admirable, admirable goal. Welcome, Angie. We're so excited that you're here. Um, next up, welcome, Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa Miller, and I am from Plymouth, Indiana. I'm an attorney, and I work with um, nonprofits and arts organizations in this area, and I'm happy to be here. Uh, well, we're welcoming and so glad you're here as well. Um, Stephanie is joining us. Uh, Stephanie, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Stephanie Carlson. I am the Grants and Sponsorships Director at the Fort Wayne Embassy Theater here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I'm representing Allen County. Good, 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 good. And last but not least, Gretchen. Hi, I'm Gretchen Brenner. I'm the Director of Fine Arts, also Musical Theater Director and Choir Director, and I'm down in Vincennes, Indiana. Vincent's very good. So we have uh, all areas and regions of the state represented. Thank you to everyone. And now we'll move on to our regional art partners and then our I, Indiana Arts Commission IAC staff. Our regional art pan partners may ask panelists for clarifications regarding a modification after the process is over. If the representing partner is not here, the IAC staff will document the decision and or the modification and communicate accordingly. So I believe Ryan is here uh, as one of our partners from Region 7. Ryan, introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Ryan Shelton. I'm the partnership manager for Nickel Plate Arts and the regional arts partner for Region 7. And I'm in Noblesville. All right, good. I was going to ask you, where's Region 7? So you, you answered that question. Very all of good. Central Indiana. Yeah, all of Central Indiana. So. Very good. Very good. All right. Um, and not seeing any other uh, regional art partners online, uh, we'll move forward uh, to the Indiana Arts Commission staff. Uh, Chapin, please introduce yourself. Sorry, I had to play there. Uh, yeah, Chief and Schneck, the Grants Research and Technology Manager. That's all right. So the Technology Manager had trouble unmuting herself. So that's okay. <laughs> At least it makes us all feel better, right? It's not just us. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for all of your help today. We appreciate it. And our fearless leader, Paige Sharp. Everybody, I'm Paige Sharp and the Deputy Director of Programs for the Indiana Arts Commission. And today I will be here just as Sonia mentioned, uh, just to make sure to get any modification down as well as the decisions and uh, provide any policy clarification as needed. So thank you all so much for reviewing applications today. Really appreciate you. All right, well, that takes care of our introductions. Uh, let's begin with a panel review and how the process is going to work today. For today's process, uh, the panelists have access to a summary sheet that has the results of their individual pre-panel evaluations of each applicant. Uh, they were based upon the 
following criteria. Their pre-panel evaluations consisted of the organizational excellence, artistic quality, community engagement, and inclusion, diversity, equity, and access. The panel will discuss each applicant with the assigned reader, providing a summary of their review and recommendation. Then we'll open the discussion to the rest of the panel. Once discussion has concluded, the panel will come to a consensus to make one of the following three recommendations to the Indiana Arts Commission. The first is to recommend yes with funding, two, uh, no, do not recommend funding, and three, a yes recommend in funding with a required modification. The required modifications will be determined by the panel and presented, and the, uh, this means that IAC and the partners will follow up with the applicant after the panel is completed to collect the information and to ensure the panelist's concerns are appropriately addressed. Once a decision has been made for each application, staff or the regional arts partner will record the decision. And if one of our panels has a conflict of interest during the time this morning with an applicant, they'll be placed into the waiting room until we're ready for the next application. That's pretty much it. Uh, are there any questions by any of our panelists, uh, staff, uh, arts partners? I will look here in the chat. <laughs> Seeing none in the chat, uh, we will just begin. And we have a, an order of applications that will be reviewed. And our first up is the Art Association of Henry County. This is in Region 5. And our reader is Stephanie. Welcome, Stephanie. Please share with us about this application. OK. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with the organizational excellence section. Um, the, I just want to go ahead and say that the, I felt that the organization's mission did reflect its purpose. Um, the board did meet regularly, and the organization is financially stable and has a reasonable plan for stability. Um, I also wanted to add that I appreciated the detailed description of the aggressive plan to regain financial stability from the organization. Um, they did mention three local establishments that are willing to partner with them to display and sell their work. This is, I mean, we've all read the application, but this is a visual arts, the art, just kind of an overview for that. But um, they mentioned that they had three local establishments, and I would be interested to know who the establishments were and why they chose to partner with those establishments. If Was it a strategic plan? Was it a, Were they three groups that they had worked with in the past? Um, just a little bit more information about that. But other than that, I felt like they, had, they did meet all of the requirements that were asked. Uh, moving on to artistic quality. I felt like the marketing did include up-to-date marketing tools. Um, and I also did say that the organization offered activities that are artistic, educational, and cultural in value. In addition, I appreciated learning about the various offerings and collaborations. Um, I would love to have more information about how the community is involved in the planning of these offerings. Um, I would also love to know how they determined who the artists were. They had a lot, a a lot of various artists that they work with, but um, we didn't really get access to the criteria that they used to determine who those artists were. Did they? I also would love to know if they administered surveys and do they have comment boxes or suggestion boxes anywhere? Um, and so I felt like I would love would have loved a little bit more detail within this section. Um, just moving forward. Just a kind of reminder within these grant applications that the only information we are able to, to gain about your organization is the information that you actually put on this grant that you're applying for. So if we have never heard of your organization before, we don't know all of the wonderful things that you're doing within the community. So the more that you can add in there for us, the better. Um, I do want to mention that they have one of the programs that they were talking about was this, it's called the mural paint by numbers that they are doing, which I thought was such a cool idea and a great way to um, include the community, but I would love more information about it. It was just kind of mentioned and I would love to know how they came up with this. Was it something that the community asked for um, and how is this going to move forward? Where is it going to be? Is it in a, a place within the community that is like a huge um, visual 
spot that everybody will see? Is it going to work together? How long is it going to take? Just all of those, those details, I would have appreciated knowing a little bit more, but I love the ideas. I love the excitement that seems to be building within this organization. Um, and then once again, there were also three local establishments mentioned in this section, and I would love to know who and why they were chosen. Um, moving forward to community engagement, um, inclusion, diversity, equity, and access. Um, I felt, um, once again, that the organization did serve underserved communities. I think within, a, within this application, a lot of um, the community that was served was the community that they have forth in front of them. So I think within that, I think they are doing some interesting things to try to appeal to the rest of those communities. But I would like to know more about the community's involvement in planning of the exhibits and educational offerings. I would like to know how they actually approach the community about that. I think there is an effort made for inclusion and access, but how are you disseminating the information to the underserved population that you speak to? and that you identify in this request. How are they getting that? Are you, how are you advertising that to them? Um, how do they know what these options are? Um, and then what has the attendance rate for these underserved individuals been? Are they, are, are they, do they come a lot or is it just kind of hit and miss? How is it working? Where are you, how are you working to bolster that? And then in addition, what are the barriers that you have seen in the past that you have had to address within this section? So um, I do feel like they, um, have a lot of information that they they I would like to see more of. I would like to hear more about within the application. I think it's a great start. I think it's a great organization. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's kind of where I'm at within this one. <laughs> Very good, Stephanie. Um, can I ask you, uh, would you recommend uh, this application for funding? Yes, I would. I actually would recommend this application for funding. All right, well, thank you for your input. Now we'll open it up to the rest of the panelists. Uh, let's just start with Lisa. Do you have additional comments and or uh, suggestions that you would like to add and how would you uh, rate and recommend this application? Oh, Miss Lisa, you have to unmute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about That's that. That's all right, it's all good. Um, Yes, I like Stephanie, I, I appreciate what they were doing. I think they're making great strides. Um, I would like to also have some more information about how they are engaging the community with their planning um, and participation. But I guess that was my largest area of concern, but um, I would recommend them for funding. All right, thank you, Lisa, I appreciate it. Gretchen, your thoughts. I would also agree with Stephanie and Lisa, a little bit more information on how they are engaging with the community, but definitely yes, recommend for funding. Okay, very good. Anthony, did you notice some of the similar questions uh, and uh, information that was missing that Stephanie did? And how would you recommend this particular application? Yeah, I would say I, have to, I would agree with the previous panelists, but I would, um, about gathering some more information about the outreach, but I do, uh, I would recommend them for funding. Okay, very good. And last but not least, Angie, uh, share with us a little bit on your thoughts. I agreed with my co-panelists um, and support the application for funding. Very good, all right. Well, in hearing no concerns, uh, and if there are any, now's the time. But in hearing no concerns, uh, does the panel agree to recommend these this particular application for funding, and if yes, please give a thumbs up. Um, staff, please take a note. We have consensus from all of the panelists indicating recommending for funding for the Art Association of Henry County um, by Anthony, Angie, Lisa, Stephanie, and Gretchen. This concludes this particular application. Thank you, panelists. Uh, you can take down your thumbs and <laughs> we'll move on to our second application now. This is the Children's Theater of Southern Indiana, Inc. from Region 10, and this is Anthony. Anthony, welcome. Uh, thank you. Okay, let me find my information here. Sure. And this is the Fendig Theater. Theater for Children. This is right? Children's Theater of Southern Indiana. Let me let me go back. Then I got the wrong one pulled up here. No problem. There's there's twelve of them, so I understand it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I apologize. Okay, here That's we fine. go. Okay. Okay. Organization, organizational excellence. Um, does the organization mission reflect the purpose? I found that it did. Um, the board meets six more than six times a year, um, and they seem to be financially stable to me. Um, and I just put that. I just I really think that the mission statement reflects their clear purpose. And I appreciated that. So let's go down to artistic quality. Um, I did find like with their, with some of their marketing tools, um, they could be updated a little bit more to be more user friendly. I had a little bit of a hard time navigating um, the website. I think that it could just be tweaked and maybe updated a little bit maybe a little bit more user friendly. But other than that, I thought it had good information and contained um, what people would need to know about the organization. It just could be updated a little bit more. Um, as far as community engagement, um, the inclusion, diversity, and equal access. Um, I found that they meet most of the criteria um, and it looks like they're making efforts to to reach out to different communities, um, especially like underserved children um, in their community. So I, it did look like they were making a lot of effort to reach out to other communities. And I would, I would recommend them for funding. All right, thank you, Anthony. Uh -huh. I appreciate your comments and it's hard with websites, all right? Technology I'm seems like, to move sorry. the speed of light. You're yeah. behind before you even get it posted, right? So 100%. But, but I appreciate your comments and um, thank you for that. Um, we'll open it to the rest of the panelists. Gretchen, share with us your thoughts about the Children's mm -hmm. Theater of Southern Indiana. Um, I loved when they talked about that they were using their student leadership organization to do the teaching and production assistance. I guess as a theater director myself, it's always sure. interesting when I see other organizations doing that. Um, and I guess just on a personal level, I was kind of curious to see if they, um, their students had a greater understanding and appreciation than working behind the scenes than when they got on stage. But I love that aspect of it. And I would definitely recommend for funding. Thank you, Gretchen. I appreciate your enthusiasm. That's awesome. Um, Angie, can you hear me? Uh, what are your thoughts on this particular application? So I agree with Gretchen. Using the students to participate and provide guidance around um, what they're used to performing in was awesome because um, it's also building uh, civic leaders. And so, yes, I did recommend for funding. Oh, thank you. Very good. Uh, Stephanie, what would you like to share? I actually agree with my fellow panelists and I did recommend them for funding. Thank you, Stephanie. Lisa, what is your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Um, I also recommend them for funding. I like um, um, Angie um, said, I appreciate that they have a student council for um for student feedback. And I also would like maybe a little bit information about how they reach out to the community at large. I love how they, they um, really make sure that their participants are very engaged. And I'd just like to know a little bit more about how the community um, was reached out to, but I, I recommend them for funding. All right, thank you very much. Hearing no concerns, uh, does the panel agree to recommend these, this particular application for funding? And if yes, please give your thumbs up. And Angie, if you want to verbally, uh, yeah, oh, there she goes. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. Staff, please take note, we have consensus. Panelists are recommending the Children's Theater of Southern Indiana, Inc. for funding. We have approval and uh, from all of our panelists, including Lisa, Stephanie, Anthony, Gretchen, and Angie. Panelists, uh, let's move on to our next application. This is you, Gretchen, so if you want to get together your paperwork, our next application is the Civic Players of Logansport from Region 4, and Gretchen is our reader. All righty. Um, I felt that the organization's mission reflected its purpose. Their board did meet regularly. 
um, and they have a plan for stability. Um, obviously, the Logansport um, Theater organization has maintained its status for many years, and, and it's a very integral part of their community. Um, I kind of felt like they were very fortunate to have some CDs in reserve when they had uh, the new roof come in, so they were able to um, not have that derail their, their, all of their budgets. Um, just continue to press forward with your fundraising opportunities um, for giving to your organization and time will bring your, your finances back to where they were. Um, as far as artistic quality, I felt like their marketing tools were fine. Um, I loved the great interaction with the community by being involved in their arts and music festivals and reaching out to the underserved communities by working with their community theater. Um, I, I'm, here again, a side note, you must be doing something right since they've been in existence and been able to be um, stable for as many years as they have been. Um, as far as community engagement, I felt like they were um, serving the underserved communities. There was a relationship between the community and their organization. And, um, and they are um, doing everything they can be to be ADA compliant. I, do know that one thing um, they were talking about having, you know, um, people that didn't understand what was going on. And so I wondered foreign um, bilingual people. And uh, I wondered if maybe they had um, students at their high school that were in a um, upper level foreign language that they could use as their translators. It would be a great opportunity for those students to um, volunteer in the community and also good for them to practice on their on their foreign language um, or maybe even a teacher in the district that would be able to assist them but I would definitely recommend them for funding. Thank you Gretchen I appreciate your comments and your good uh, insight into that great suggestions um, so we'll open it up to the panelists um, Angie what what would you like to share about this particular application in Logansport? So I agree with Gretchen um, that although they had that major capital repair, they were still able to uh, provide services and programming, and I did recommend for funding. Thank you very much. Uh, Lisa, what would you like to add? Um, I agree. I would recommend them for funding as well. Okay. Stephanie, comments, suggestions? I also loved that one of the things I thought was so great is that they offer they're they're really inclusive with their community. I love that they include audience members in future shows and if they want to have them direct. I just thought I just really wanted to uh, you know commend them for that because I think when we talk about community engagement a lot of times there's not a full understanding of what that actually looks like and I do feel like this organization really truly grasps it and I think that they should be um, truly applauded for that because I think it's really great that they're doing it. So yes, I did I recommended them for funding. Thank you. Thank you. That's not always easy to, to think beyond just the words of community engagement. So good point. Anthony, what would you like to share? Um, I would like to agree with everyone, especially Stephanie, about things they've said about this organization. And I would like to uh, approve them for funding as well. All right. So hearing no concerns uh, from our panelists, uh, the question is, does the panel agree to recommend these applications for funding? And if yes, please provide a thumbs up. Please note for our staff that all of the panelists have recommended the City Civic Players of Logansport from Region 4 for funding. This includes Lisa, Stephanie, Angie, Gretchen, and Anthony. Thank you, panelists. We'll move on to our next application. Uh, that is Angie. If you want to get your, your papers prepared, Angie, it is the Evansville African American Museum out of Region 10, obviously in Evansville. And Angie, you're our reader, so whenever you're ready, please unmute and share with us your thoughts. So I was um, quite impressed with the fact that they existed in Evansville um, because I did not know that and I've been to Evansville a couple of times, so I will be looking out for their um, next exhibit. I like that the exhibits were in the community. Um, they provide a almost like a living history museum around the Evansville area for African Americans. Um, <clears throat> but they um, they go back. I didn't know. I, I was I guess highly impressed that there was so much history in Evansville outside of what I knew. Um, 
their governance and process was fine. They had their 12 meetings per year. Their budget was uh, well-defined and identified and sustainable. And their connection to the community um, and access was identified and active. And so um, I recommended them for funding and um, applauded them for putting their, not just being in the walls, the four walls of their building, but being in their community and having um, a way for the high school to be, um, you know, part of the, part of the, the museum. Thank you, Angie. Um, we'll open it up uh, to the panelists uh, for additional conversation. Anthony, what would you like to share? I would like to agree. And I was, I was also pleasantly surprised that um, something like this exists in Evansville. And next time I'm down there, I'll make sure I check it out. And I would recommend them for funding. Right. Gretchen, what about your thoughts? I'm an hour from Evansville and I had no idea it existed. So it will definitely be a stop on my list and I recommend for funding. Thank you, Gretchen. Stephanie, uh, what would you like to share about this particular application? So my take is a little bit different. Um, I, I am so excited about this organization. The minute I heard about this mission, I was like, I cannot wait to read this application. This is gonna be the most incredible mission ever. My concern with this is that um, I didn't have enough information from them. I felt like they really could have given a lot more information. And I will expound upon that a little bit more because I think that this is such a great mission. Um, I love that they also uh, have their, have two properties that reference um, the firsthand knowledge to future generations that, will, that they will receive. I love that students and patrons can go in and actually immersify themselves within this. I think that it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, I was concerned the balance sheet provided um, was for 12 of 2020. And one of the requirements stated that is that the, the balance sheet needed to be as a 12 of 2021. So I would like them to be able to maybe kind of see an updated balance sheet that's a little bit more current based on the requirements that were set forth by the IAC. Um, when it comes to artistic quality, I was not able to access the website, first of all. Um, the link did not work for me. So I actually um, could not access the website. I kind of went a roundabout way to see if I could like change it a little bit. And then I was able to access it. But the link that they provided did not work for me. I don't know if that was just my computer and it could possibly have been my error, but it didn't work. But um, and I would have loved to have a little bit more detail in the section about your activities. These activities sound exciting, but more detail to fully understand what is actually happening during each of the activities would help. You have 3000 characters within this, this um, application to be able to provide information for us. And we only get the information that you give us. And I would love to hear more about this. I would love to hear, I mean, I'm so excited about this mission. When it comes to, community engagement and idea, um, uh, inclusion, diversity, equity, and access. Sorry, I wanted to be a little bit more clear there. <laughs> um, I, in general, like again, once again, I would like to get more information. So for example, you state that the board is active in central planning, participating and evaluating your commitments to the community. I would like to know how, how are they active? When you say that they're active, what does that actually mean? And what accompanies that statement? Can you give us more information about that? Another example would be that you state that the museum staff and the director also collaborate and participate with many community organizations. So when you say many community organizations, I would like to know how many is many. When you talk about that, what are their interests in your organization? Who are they? How do you collaborate with them? How often do you meet with them? Just more detail, I'm trying to help provide more detail for us so that in the future when you promote, when you apply, because I, I hope that you do, um, because I think this is an incredible organization, please remember that the only information we get is the information that you give us. That being said, I did recommend them for funding. I think that they can do some incredible things with, with this funding, but I would like to maybe require a, a couple of modifications just to give us more information. Predominantly though, I would like to see a more updated balance sheet, but I am so excited for this organization. I think they will do great things and I love the mission. I just would like some more details. 
All right, um, we'll uh, come back to your modification question. First, we'll go to Lisa, uh, get your input, and then we'll circle back for a general further discussion. Lisa, your comments. Yes, um, I, I guess I echo Stephanie. I really appreciate what they're doing. I think it's a fantastic mission and I would love to visit. Um, I do feel like we need a little bit more specifics with respect to the balance sheet. Also, um, another area I was concerned about um, as far as it looks like they have a museum campus, but I'm seeing that admissions is a very, very small portion of their budget. So I would, that just led me to wonder, are they having a lot of free admissions? And so it's not reflected in that number. I, I just wonder how are they getting people to the campus to see this incredible resource? Um, so I guess that was one of my concerns too, that maybe the balance sheet would help um, clarify as well. All right, so we'll open it up to all of the panelists. Um, we'll go through the process of the modification request. It appears, Stephanie, and don't let me speak on your behalf, but it appears that the recommendation with modification is regarding the balance sheet and not about the website link. Uh, did any of the panelists have challenges with the website link yourselves or was it just broken? No, so it could have been just on that particular time when you looked, I'm not quite sure, Stephanie, but but did any of the panelists see um, the balance sheet from 1221? Um, did anybody notice that or is it definitely missing from everyone's application? I have the balance sheet from December, 2021. Angie, you do? I do. Paige? I'm here. I'm looking. Oh, great. Thank uh, you. Go ahead and feel free to, you know, if there's other sure. general comments, um, welcome other thoughts as well. Can I? Sure. Would it be okay to clarify? Yes. Go right there's on. a profit and loss year to date statement from 2021. There is not a balance sheet on mine. There is a profit and loss from 20 and 21. Oh, uh, okay. The balance sheet is from 2020, and that's where it stipulates in the requirements. All right, so on, my, that would, on my application. Sure, so that's where we'll need to have the clarification from Paige. Is it the balance sheet, the profit loss sheet? Is the one page actually missing? And uh, overall though, it sounds like uh, everyone was appreciative of this application and it's just one step that might need to be funneled through. Um, and we'll see here what Paige finds. Uh, it appears uh, that there are no additional concerns from the panelists overall for modifications, um, that the, you would consider the appropriate statement that the Evansville African American Museum from Region 10 would be approved with modification request, and that modification request uh, would be to have the uh, location and applicant return that balance sheet for 12 of 21 to the uh, Indiana Arts Commission staff and the regional arts partner and, in order to make you all feel more comfortable. If that's an accurate statement, please indicate by signifying a thumbs up. All right, so we have consensus that that is the next step for this particular uh, location and uh, that the, for the Evansville African American Museum, uh, we would like to have note for the staff that the Evansville African American Museum has been recommended for funding with the modification request of the balance sheet from 12 of 21 being submitted. And uh, we will move on and we have consensus from all of our panelists Lisa, Stephanie, Angie, Gretchen, and Anthony for that modification. We will move on to applicant number five, which is Lisa's application. We'll have Lisa get prepared and we will uh, discuss now the Fendig Theater for Children. Fendig Theater for Children out of region four. Lisa, take it away. Okay, um, so the Fendig Theater for Children, I found that their mission did reflect their purpose. The board meets regularly and I thought they've um, presented a really nice, thoughtful, um, financial stability statement. They had a, a num I really appreciated they had a number, they really laid out in a concrete way their steps for achieving financial stability. Um, my only concern, and not even really concern on their financial statements were they mentioned throughout the application that they um, had two properties 
a land and also a building. And it, <clears throat> excuse me, those assets did not appear on their balance sheet. So I wondered if they actually had title to those properties or, or, or how they um, reflect on their financial statements. So that was my only concern about their financial stability, but they did have a really nice plan in place to achieve financial stability. Um, also, it, this is an organization that has, has a great history. They provide um, respect to artistic quality. Um, their marketing tools were very up to date. I love their website, it was vibrant. It was easy to engage with, it, easy to figure out how to donate, how to get become involved. Um, it, they even, I think, gave a statement about how they're, it's accessible to so many. So um, I really appreciated how they are utilizing their social media as well as their website um, to reach out to the community. So I thought that was a really um, impressive attribute of this organization. Um, they provide, I mean, their programming sounds incredible. Um, lots of, it seems like they're expanding from, from, from a predominantly summer oriented program to all year round. And even through the pandemic, which threw a lot of especially performing arts um, organizations for a loop, they really, they really pivoted nicely to the online um, medium and just provided some excellent programming throughout that experience. And they were able to have um, a positive year end despite you know having to go virtual. Um, and they did a nice job of documenting how they grew their online audience as well. So I liked, I liked that aspect um, of their organization. Um, also, they, um, they have an impressive effort to engage with their community. Again, they had their multiple steps of how they engage the community in the, in the organization. I particularly like that they established a children's advisory board and a community connection board to kind of reach out to the community and get feedback um, about what the community would like to see them do. So I, I thought that was really impressive. Um, as far as reaching out to um, the final section about reaching out to underserved communities. Um, again, they do a nice job of working with other organizations. They have um, various collaborations with other organizations. Um, they also, um, they seem to be very in inclusive um, with their programming and with um, who they choose to, who they are um, able to, to work with. Um, they identify young, youth at risk from their schools. So I thought that was a great way to reach new potential participants as well. So um, I would recommend them for funding. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for your review and your comments. We'll open it up to the panel. Gretchen, what would you like to share? Um, I would agree with Lisa. And I also loved that they built the bond between their older population and their youth, because we can all learn so much from each other. And I thought that was fabulous. And I would recommend them for funding. That's excellent, isn't it? It's a great vibe for any community or organization to have that for the future. That bodes well. I appreciate that. Angie, what would you like to share? So I like the fact that they were multi-generational. Um, I think that is um, how we keep the arts living. Um, and then um, I appreciate them having more than one um, social media or uh, internet access. And so um, it, was, it was easy to navigate and um, interesting to learn on different platforms. And would you and recommend, recommend for funding? Thank you, Angie. I appreciate that. You know, social media is the wave of, that's that's the thing, right? That's what everybody's doing. And to make it easy for everyone, I think we all kind of expect that as users, right? So your points are very valid. If it's easy and various uh, available uh, communication points for multi-generations, that's very important. So good job. Stephanie, what would you like to share? I also would recommend this for funding. I love that they had student um and participation in every aspect of the performance. I think as college and career readiness is such a big push right now for a lot of organizations, I think they are preparing these students for all aspects of future success. And I just am super excited about their mission. Thank you, Stephanie. Anthony? Um, yeah, I would uh, recommend them for funding too. I have a very uh, soft spot in my heart for children's theater. And I think that it's a great learning tool for everyone. So I would definitely recommend for funding. All right. Uh, uh, if there are no concerns from any of the panelists, and I've heard none, um, does the panel agree to recommend this particular application for funding? If so, please indicate with a thumbs up. I see all thumbs up. So staff, please take note that the 
uh, Fending Theater for Children in Region 4 has been approved for funding. We have consensus. All of the panelists have indicated their recommendation, including Lisa, Stephanie, Angie, Gretchen, and Anthony. Thank you, panelists. We'll move on to our application number six, which is Fire Arts, Inc. Fire Arts, Inc. is in Region 2, and our reader is Anthony. Anthony, welcome. Please share with us. Once you find, oh, you have to unmute yourself there. Sorry, technology. <laughs> there I am. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, da, da. Organization, organizational excellence. Um, I really, I loved the uh, mission statement for uh, fire arts. This is, I really love these kind of places that have, that uh, provide spaces for artists to learn and use some of their equipment. So I think this is, a, I love this kind of thing. Um, and they meet all the other criteria of meeting, uh, their board meeting at least six times a year, they meet 12, and then it looks to me like it's financial stable. Um, and if I go down here, artistic quality, um, their marketing tools, all they have listed is a Facebook page, which is great. Um, and the Facebook page had a lot of good information on it. I think that there's uh, maybe some more modern ways a website or some other um, additional uh, social media accounts that they could use. But I mean, the Facebook that they have is great, but I think that they're, they could probably update that a little bit. Um, and I do think what they're, what they offer does uh, have artistic and educational and cultural value. Um, so let me go down to community engagement. Um, it does seem like they are really trying to, uh, enrich their outreach by different programs. Um, they're trying to like diversify who uses their program. So I think that that's great. They at least have those plans in place. I don't know if they're working right now, but working towards the future, hopefully it does. And I would recommend them for funding. Thank you, Anthony. I think it's interesting. Um, you know, so many organizations think Facebook is their website that uh, yeah. I find this with a lot of other businesses. And uh, your point is very valid that um, uh, it, there are other other channels, aren't there? So I, I think it's very interesting that trend in businesses today. But thank you for your comments. We appreciate that. We'll open it up to the panelists. Uh, Gretchen, what would you like to share? I agree with Anthony and I would definitely recommend for funding. All right, thank you. Lisa? I would recommend for funding as well. And Angie? I appreciate them also utilizing their space for the community um, to hold, hold meetings and things. Um, so, you know, when we were in the lockdown, having open space to be able to have meetings um, and having a place where art is created is a, is a great community connect. And I did recommend for funding. Thank you, Angie. Stephanie. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I was typing. Um, I uh, also recommended them for funding, but I also do want to add, there's a, there are just a couple of things that I do want to add. I know that I'm a stickler for this and I apologize for being a stickler for this, but once again, these, these applications, I feel like there's a lot missing. I feel like in the fact of detail, um, I feel like that it left me with a lot of questions. I'm excited about the mission. I'm excited about what they do, but I don't, I like one major question that I had for them was based on like, who decides if artists are uh, the way that they stated it. Like I'm looking for where, cause I wrote it down and now I'm like scrolling to try to find it, but that's part of their mission is to, um, actually have artists be competent, all of those different mm -hmm. things, but who decides that? who um, is the person who actually makes that determination whether an artist is competent or not, or I don't know if I'm using the right word choice. So I apologize if I have that wrong, but I just, I would love to know more information about, oh, that's what it is, if, what, that they are creative, competent, and driven. Who decides if they're creative, competent, and driven? They're artists. And so I think for me that, that I, it left me with some questions that I would love to have been answered. I know that I'm, I'm almost sure that they have that answer. It's just not provided within that, within the application. Application. Um, I would also like a little bit more clarification regarding financial stability. I just think the more details that you can add. Um, and then it mm -hmm. says you're planning at this moment to provide services to people with di disabilities in the community in the near future. 
what does that look like? Is there a projection as to when? Can you give us a plan as to what you're actually providing? What are the steps that you're going to take? What are you going to do? I would love to see action steps. I would love to see that, like what has happened, what you've seen from other organizations, how you can apply that to your organization. Um, I did recommend them for funding because I think with this funding, maybe they can get some of these questions answered a little bit clearer throughout the process as they move forward. I look forward to seeing what they're going to do, but I think um, the more you can give us within these applications, I would just love to see more. Like what led you to provide this service in the first place? How do you determine community need? I don't think any of these questions um, they need to be better clarified within the application, but I did recommend them for funding. Thank you, Stephanie. I think what's uh, challenging, sometimes people look perhaps at grant writing and overthink the process, think they have to come up with massive flowing statements when really just answer the question of who, what, why, where, and when, and literally make it five, six words, a sentence. Who is our audience? What are you doing? How are you defining being driven? Who is in charge? And that might help clarify and help your job as panelists reviewing grant applications much easier if, if people don't overthink it so much and don't stress out so much. It is important, but just answer the basic who, what, why, when, and where in the Absolutely. grant might assist all of our panelists and our applications and our applicants in, in a very succinct way that would be user-friendly, perhaps. <laughs> um, uh, so so I, I don't feel afraid to continue to bring that up, Stephanie. That's just fine. We appreciate all of you for your comments. Um, uh, since I did not hear any concerns about this application for Fire Arts Inc., we would ask, does the panel agree to recommend this application for funding? And if so, please give a thumbs up. Uh, staff, please take a note that we have consensus for Fire Arts, Inc. Uh, the panelists recommend uh, their application be funded, and we have full, complete consensus from Lisa, Stephanie, Angie, Gretchen, and Anthony. Thank you, panelists. We appreciate it very much. We are at the halfway point. I'll ask and see, would anybody like a five-minute break from our panelists? If so, put a thumbs up. Otherwise, we'll keep moving forward. Having seen none, we'll move forward. We're on application number seven for the, uh, this is Stephanie's application for the Indiana Music Education Association Foundation out of region seven. Thank you, Stephanie. As we learned earlier, region seven's in the center part of the state. So <laughs> take it away. <laughs> um, this, the, this application, like you said, um, is for the Indiana Music Educators Association, which has been in existence for quite a while, which is, uh, it's nice to see 1943, which so the longevity of this organization um, is very apparent. Um, I do feel like the mission reflects its purpose. I do feel like the board meets regularly and the organization is financially stable. Um, and so I do not have any other comments about that. Um, moving forward to artistic quality, the marketing does seem up, up to date. Um, the organization does offer activities that are artistic, educational, and have cultural value. I also greatly appreciated learning about all of the arts education offerings through IMEA. Um, I think they offer so much to teachers, but also to students. And I think they're very clear in how much they actually bring to students as well. Um, it's got a robust membership base, which is incredibly apparent. And I think has a lot to do after the pandemic with them coming back. I love that they provided numbers. They provided us with as many details as they could within this application so that we can see when they come back from this pandemic, okay, yes, we're, we are having these, we're doing our IMEA conference again, and these are our attendants. And this is how many people showed up and here are the surveys. And these, is, these are the questions they actually provided the questions that they ask on the survey so we know what is being asked and we know how that's being applied throughout the organization. All of it. I thought it was really, really great. Um, moving forward, um, I did recommend them for funding and I appreciate the examples. I appreciate all of the amount of detail as you guys have heard me say <laughs> over the last half hour. This was, this was very robust in its detail and I really didn't have a lot of questions left because they answered them all for me. And I'm just really excited that coming back from COVID, they are actually able to move forward. So um, I, with a lot of uh, I feel like they just have a lot of gas. They can just go. It's going to be awesome for them. 
Very good. Thank you very much, Stephanie. I appreciate your comments and your enthusiasm for a job well done. <laughs> so that's good. Uh, we'll ask and open it up to our panelists. Lisa, what would you like to share about this particular yes, application? I, sure. Um, I share Stephanie's enthusiasm for the level of detail that was provided in mm -hmm. this application. I think it, it made our job easy to lay out for So that was really nice. And I also enjoyed their website and learning, it really was a great tool to learn about the organization and all the amazing things that they're doing throughout the state. So I, I recommend them for funding as well. Perfect. Angie, what would you like to share? I recommend them for funding. And I just like, um, like Stephanie said, um, I appreciate them having the, the skill set and ability to, you know, to write for a robust grant. Um, and you can definitely tell the difference between an organization and our smaller uh, grantees. Well, I appreciate that comment. And it's a very valid statement. Not everybody has the skills uh, for grant writing and there are a lot of volunteers and it is a learned process. And so hopefully with this coaching and, and some of these programs that we're sharing and through the wonderful work that IAC does, uh, that everyone can uh, elevate their skill sets and improve the each year. And so I appreciate that comment. That's true. Um, uh, it is definitely a more sophisticated organization, but every, every applicant is, is worthy of being uh, a part of our day today. So thank you for that. Gretchen, what would you like to add? IMEA is a wonderful um, organization, provides many opportunities. So Gretchen, you froze a little bit for me. I'm so oh, sorry. I, I recommend for funding. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry about that. Uh, for, my, for me anyway, it, it popped up. Anthony, what would you like to share? Um, I agree with all of the panelists um, and I recommend them for funding. All right, uh, hearing no concerns, um, we would ask the panel, do you all agree that the Indiana Music Education Association Foundation in Region 7 be approved for funding? And if so, indicate with a thumbs up. Uh, we'd like the staff to please take note. We have consensus. Uh, the Indiana Music Education Association Foundation has been approved. All of our panelists have consensus. And this includes Lisa, Stephanie, Angie, Gretchen, and Anthony. Thank you, panelists. We'll move on to our next application. It's for Angie. It is the Kokomo Community Concerts, Inc. out of Region 4. And Angie, uh, when you're ready, unmute yourself and please share. Well, I enjoyed finding out about um, yet another piece of art, uh, access to art in the community, um, and um, appreciated their application. Um, I did have some concerns for them. Um, I understood their mission. Their mission did tie back to um, our purpose. Give me just a second. Um, I, they did list that they had no projected income for um, the uh, upcoming year, and they only had three board meetings. So I was um, concerned as if we needed to, you know, um, make that modification around their board meetings and just to get them to update the application to show their um, um, projected income. They provided both their income statement and their balance sheet, which was fine. Um, but it was a line item for projected income. Right, but it didn't show up on the actual, um, and I didn't want to bother any of it. Um, sure. To update it. Um, but I, yes, I did see their, I, I saw it on their balance sheet, but not on their actual application. Okay. Um, their website was um, easy to get to um, and enjoy looking around it. I did um, love their activities around engaging 
um, multi generational uh, individuals uh, for the arts. Um, for me, that's just one of teaching children civic responsibility, and two, making sure the arts do not um, just go away once the kiddos get older. So I, I love that they had an emphasis on their seniors um, and getting students in front of their seniors and seniors in front of their students. Um, their venue um, is at the local high school, so I'm, I'm, I know that there are all of the ADA requirements. Um, and they really did a good job of pulling in their diversity into the community that they have. And so um, outside of the board meetings um, and the application notification on their projected income, I recommend it for funding. All right, so recommendations with modifications. Thank you, Angie, we appreciate that. We'll open it to other panelists. Uh, Lisa, did you have similar concerns about these modifications or other modifications that you would like to discuss? Yes, I also um, would recommend it with modifications. Um, I was a little bit concerned because um, the financial information they presented was from this past year as was requested um, and they didn't really have a normal kind of concert schedule this year and they didn't seem to, to go into like the uh, online space. So I didn't feel like maybe we have enough information from a current um, profit mm -hmm. loss sheet to determine if they're able to go forward. It does look like they have a, a decent cushion of savings, but it would might be helpful to have um, a profit loss statement from like before the pandemic to see you know what their typical expenses are and what their typical um, income is. And also- sure. um, because it seemed like they rely a lot on ticket sales for their revenue. And I, I don't see a lot of diversification of their revenue sources. So if prior statements could help out with that, that'd be great. So your recommendation is for approval with the addition of uh, profit loss statements prior to the pandemic. That would help make you feel more comfortable to understand their financial uh, status. Okay. All right. I, and I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth. I'm just trying to recap. Okay, good. All right. Anthony, what would you like to share? Uh, do you have uh, similar concerns or, or have an additional uh, recommendation or funding question? I have similar concerns. I would say that I agree with both uh, Lisa and Angie regarding okay. the yes, but. With so you're recommending with modifications and the modifications seem to rely around the financial data and the board uh, gathering. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, Stephanie, uh, what comments would you like to share? I also have considered share the same board, the recommendations. Mm -hmm. Like if I can't talk right now. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, yes. With, uh, with recommendations for increased, increased uh, frequency in board meetings and a more um, updated uh, profit and loss statement. I do want to just give them some props on this. This, this is something that we've been talking about a lot, just about the detail within the application. And they did provide that a lot within this application when it comes to community engagement. I appreciate the detail they provided about their surveys and the one-on-one -on -one one -on -one conversations that were conducted during the ticket buying process. Um, that actually shows us that they are really having those conversations with in regards to community output. So I, our input, sorry. So I really appreciate that. And I did love that they offer opportunities for students to interact with the artists that they contract to perform. I thought that was really great. And what a great opportunity for students to be able to experience these artists that are professionally coming in. So I just wanted to, to just make note of that as well. Very good. Gretchen, uh, last but not least, uh, what are your thoughts, uh, recommendations, modifications, any of that stuff? I would agree with the rest of the panel to um, update their profit and loss statement, but I also want to give them kudos that, that they're continuing, and I feel like their community has a lot of faith in their organization, and, and I appreciate what this group has to offer, so I would recommend funding with the required modifications. Okay, so uh, to recap uh, what we have for the Kokomo Community Concerts, Inc. in Region 4, the panel is uh, recommending funding with the modifications to be returned to the staff and the regional art partners to include updated financial information, profit loss statements prior to the pandemic, uh, updated pro pro project projections 
projected income uh, from their application compared to the balance sheet and updated information regarding their board meetings uh, from the required six. It indicates only three. Uh, those three recommendations uh, would be requested for funding uh, in order for the panelists to be uh, comfortable in recommending. If this is all acceptable in the words that I've stated to everyone and our panel, please indicate it with a thumbs up. If not, please tell me and we can edit the comments. All right, uh, for the staff, please take a note. We have consensus that uh, the Kokomo Community Concerts Inc. Uh, Region four has been approved, recommended with modifications as stated previously. We have consensus from all of our partners and panelists, Lisa, Stephanie, Angie, Gretchen, and Anthony. Thank you, panel. Uh, we will continue on with our next application. That's the Mill Race Theater Company. Um, this is in Region 9, and Anthony is our speaker. Anthony, take it away. Okay. Um, we'll start with the organizational excellence. Um, I thought that their uh, mission statement's great. It really explains what they're doing. Um, I think, I mean, I agree with all the stuff that they say about the arts or theater nurturing and all those kind of things, because I'm an art in the theater, so <laughs> I love all that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And they kind of check all the other boxes in this um, area. I think, I don't know that much about uh, financial stability, but they look like they're pretty stable. Um, let's see, I'll go down. Their marketing tools um, looked great. I really loved, I know I've kind of harped on some other people, but both their Facebook and their um, website were really up to date. Um, I appreciated that the branding on both of them were the same. I like that kind of stuff. Um, and they were easy to navigate, find out the information about auditions and different um, opportunities. Uh, do, 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 do. And then let's see, uh, their community engagement. Um, let's see. Yeah, they, they really appear to be um, actively outreaching to um, different members of their com community. Um, I think I think maybe they could pick um, some more diverse shows to outreach to different people, but the shows that they're doing right now are very broad and I think that's, that's also great um, as well. So I would recommend them for funding. Thank you, Anthony, appreciate yeah. that. We'll open it up to our panelists. Uh, Gretchen, what would you like to add? I would also um, like to recommend for funding for this organization. Okay, thank you very much. Lisa? Um, I recommend this organization, organization for funding. Thank you. Any comments, Angie? Anything you'd like to share or uh, how would you like to recommend? I recommend this organization for funding. Okay, Stephanie? You know I have a comment. Okay. so. <laughs> Um, I just, I only do this to help that I promise yep. it's just out of all helping. Um, yep. so within artistic quality, I appreciate that they conduct post-show surveys of their participants and utilize that information in the decision-making, but I would like a little bit more detail with this. So what type of questions do you ask within these surveys? Mm -hmm. How does that translate to your offerings and how do you determine your offerings? I know that Anthony mentioned like a little bit more diverse within that. And, and I agree with him on that. I think, um, based on what you get from these surveys, I mean, how does that apply? I would love to know that information. The other thing, um, I appreciate that you state that in 2020, the organization recommitted to equality in its programming and engaged community members in identifying ways that your programming could be more welcoming to all parts of the community. But I would again like to know more about the finding, what does that mean? So making these statements are wonderful, but like, you know, Sonia had mentioned in an earlier application, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. I think if you can just go with those, I think that would be a little bit helpful for us as panelists, because I'm super excited to know how this moves forward. And I love that, that you guys are in existence and I love what you're doing. I would just like to know more about what you're doing. It's exciting for me to read all of these incredible things. So um, I do recommend them for funding. I just wanted to add, of course, those couple of comments because why not? <laughs> well, that's fine. Each application uh, would be getting the notes back from their regional art partners. And so that's all appropriate. 
We thank everyone for any comments that you're sharing, uh, whether it's repetitive or not. Doesn't matter whether it's about Facebook or about, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> so I haven't heard any concerns though about the Mill Race Theater Company. And uh, having said that, uh, the, does the panel agree to recommend this particular application for funding? And if so, please indicate with a thumbs up. Staff, please take a note that we have consensus that the Mill Race Theater Company has been approved for funding. And we have all of our panelists agreeing, Lisa, Stephanie, NG, Gretchen, and Anthony. Thank you, panelists. We'll move on to our next application, which is for Gretchen. But Gretchen, we have, can't start yet. You have to say goodbye to Anthony, everyone. Anthony's going into the bye-bye room. Anthony has a, uh, uh, a challenge and uh, a, a conflict with this particular application. So this is the River West Theater, Inc. doing business as Fonseca Theater. It's in Region 7, and Gretchen is our, our reader. So Gretchen, Anthony is gone. Take it away. Okay. Um, I felt like in the organizational area, they checked all the boxes. I do want to commend them. Kudos for being an organization that started in 2018, and they are still part of us. I, I read just highly pat on the back for them. Um, they do have a plan in place to recoup many of their funds that they lost during COVID and, and also a plan in place to become more financially stable in the future. But I have to go back again. They started in 2018. We shut down, so they haven't been able to do much. Um, I think um, their marketing tools were up to date and they did have activities that were artistic, educational and of cultural value. Um, I know they were trying to conserve some money, but I did wonder if they were sending out mailers to pr promote their events and how were they getting others involved in their program. Um, under community engagement. I felt like they checked all the boxes in there. I loved their coffee bar idea that will create employment opportunities and just a gathering space for the residents in the area. Um, everybody likes to eat or drink coffee and get out and socialize. And I think this would be a great way to bring more people into their program. Um, and they are working on becoming ADA compliant in all areas. And once again, yay for them to start right before a pandemic. So I would definitely recommend them for funding. Thank you, Gretchen. Very good. We appreciate that. We'll open it up to the rest of our panelists. Lisa, what would you like to add? Yes, I would um, also recommend them for, fun, for funding. Um, I appreciate the level of specificity specificity they had in their application they had a lot, a lot of nice um, statistics that were supportive of their um, of their answers and so I, I appreciate that so I would recommend them for funding very good Stephanie I third all of that like I just I loved reading this application it I was just super excited about it the whole way through just Thank you for your level of specificity. Thank you for, thank you for persevering through this. I totally agree. Gretchen, I was like, go team on this whole application. <laughs> I just was really proud of them. I think this is really great. And I'm really excited to see, like, I'm, it's one of the, these are, this is one of the ones I kind of want to watch and see what happens as they get, hopefully are recommended for funding and, and get to move forward with all of this. I just look forward to what they're going to do. It's really exciting. So yes, I recommend them for funding. Thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate that. Angie, what would you like to add? Um, I appreciated all their details as well. Um, and um, them being, uh, when they look for venues, looking for venues that are already ADA compliant. And I love that they are inclusive of all communities and I did recommend them for funding. Very good. Thank you all panelists. Hearing no concerns, uh, we would ask you, do you agree to recommend the River West Theater Inc. DBA Fonseca Theater for funding? If so, please indicate with thumbs up. Staff, please take note, we have consensus. Uh, all of our panelists uh, have recommended the River West Theater Inc. for funding. This includes Lisa, Stephanie, Angie, and Gretchen. Having concluded this particular application, we'll ask Anthony to be brought back into the main room. <laughs> and he's not there. <laughs> we caught you, Anthony. I'm right here. <laughs> That's all right. We welcome back to the Zoom room. We appreciate it. We're on to our next application, which is Stephanie's. The Indie Convergence Inc. is the application. Uh, Stephanie, please take it away. 
Okay. So Indie Convergence Inc. Um, first of all, I did actually really enjoy reading this application because I had heard of them. Um, and, but I love actually getting a little bit more detail as to what it is that they actually do. I think it's a concept that sometimes not everybody can grasp wholeheartedly sometimes, unless you really dive into what it is that they're doing. And I think it's really admirable. Um, the, I do feel like within organizational organizational excellence. It did check all of the boxes. The one thing that I will say um, <clears throat> that I noticed within this application within financial stability is they do have a very rigorous, um, detailed post-pandemic financial plan when it comes to grants and trying to apply for all of those grants, which I commend because if you've written a grant application, it is a lot of work. And so I just, I give a lot of props to their executive director who's willing to take that on. Um, I also appreciate that you're diversifying your plans for future funding, different things. The one thing that I did notice, and, and I just want to make note of it is I understand that within the, with their board, um, within their board that they have kind of changed that in, to allow for more people to join within their board. They've changed their funding requirement of their board, but I do just want to, to, to kind of point out that it looked like from their financial statement and I am not a guru within financial statements, but it, with all of when they're requesting over 200 and some thousand dollars in grant requests, but then their board is only contributing, it looks like a thousand dollars. Now that could change because of the way that their fiscal year has changed within the organization. But I would just say to pay attention to that because within fundraising, your board is your number one fundraiser for the organization. And if your board is not behind, now I don't know because of the amount of detail given within this, how much their board is actually doing. So there could be many other things that their board is doing as a way to support the organization, not necessarily monetarily. And if they do have, like, I think in, in different years of, of applications, we've known, you know, how much, what is the percentage of board giving within the organization? That's something that we don't know here. So it could be that hundred percent of their board gives, and it's just not a large monetary amount. So mm -hmm. for me, that's also very important to know how much their board, like, actually contributes to the organization, whether it be time, talent, all of those things as sure. well. But I think just comparatively, when you're asking for that much money within grants, they're going to look at your board giving. And if the board giving is a little bit less, I think that might be something that you should pay attention to. I don't know. I mean, time will tell how that works, but that's just a caveat for you because I'm really excited about this organization and what they're doing. Um, and um, so all of those things I did check. Yes, I think they're good. And I think that they do have a great plan and I appreciate that they're so excited to come back. Um, I do thank you for the detailed example of your collaboration with the, the ROW White River committee or sorry, committee. I think that's wonderful. Um, moving on to artistic quality. Um, I, I just, again, I'm intrigued by all their projects. I thank, I thank them for the detail given within the description. I'd love to little, know a little bit more about how they choose their collaborations. Like who, I mean, I know that they, what they do, but I just, just a little bit more about how and how um, you obtain the information within, like you mentioned that your collaborations are requested from the community. And I would like to know that how, how they obtain that information. If it was requested from the community, how was it requested? Was it through surveys, one-on-one -on -one conversations? Did somebody reach out and say, I would love for you to, to do this? I would just like to know a little bit more information about that. Um, and I do appreciate their attempt to obtain more specific and concrete data for their participants moving forward. It looks like they were... Um, transparent in the fact that maybe their ability to obtain that information, qualitative, quantitative data, all of that is a little bit, um, not, I don't want to say lacking, but they need to do a better job of that based on their, um, their information. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that transparency. So I'm excited to hear about the new programs and I'm excited to see them move forward. And I did recommend them for funding. Thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate your comments. Very well thought out. Uh, we'll move on to our rest of our panelists. Um, Angie, would you like to add something to share? Uh, I recommend them for funding. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Anthony? Um, I recommend them for funding as well. Good, good. Gretchen? Um, I agreed with Stephanie when I appreciated their transparency. I realized that when you write these grants, you're trying to put your best foot forward so you can get the funding 
but I loved how they were saying that this is what we're doing to make ourselves better as well. And they were very transparent. And so I did appreciate that as well. Um, and I would recommend for funding. Very good, very good. Lisa, comments? Yes, I'd also recommend them for funding. Okay, well, panelists, uh, uh, hearing no concerns about the ND Convergence Inc. application, does the panel agree that this one should be funded? And if so, uh, would you put a thumbs up? All right, uh, staff, please take a note. We have consensus. Uh, the panelists are, are recommending the Indie Convergence Inc. to be funded from Region 7. And all panelists have uh, provided consensus. That's Lisa, Stephanie, Angie, Gretchen, and Anthony. Thank you, everyone. We'll move on to our next application, which happens to be Lisa's and is our last application for the day. This is the Three Rivers Music Festival out of Region 3. So Lisa, when you're ready, please unmute and share with us your thoughts on this particular application. Um, yes, Three Rivers Music Theater. Um, I felt, looking at their organizational ex excellence section, um, I felt their mission did reflect their purpose. They do um, meet regularly. Um, my only concern with respect to the financial stability is it looks like they um, mistakenly posted the um, IAC example balance sheet for the balance <laughs> code. So if they could provide the actual one, I think that would be helpful. I don't know if, if anyone else, if I was the only one that Okay. Yeah, it looks like everybody so, else. Has that would help. I mean, it looks like they are in, despite the pandemic, that they have done a really nice job of weathering that with pivoting to some online programming. They still had um, some production income and and tuition. So they ended. It looked like they ended 2021 on a positive um, note. So that's fantastic. They have multiple revenue streams and um, fairly robust online giving, which I think is kind of a, a nice thing to tap into that I haven't seen a lot. Um, so that's great. Um, their expenses seem reasonable. So just if they could provide that balance sheet, that would be super. Um, going on to their, uh, their artistic quality, they did have a nice um, active and engaging social media presence. Um, I just noticed I went on there again just to take a little look this morning. They um, were posting about a signing day for their students, kind of like athletes do. They did it for their um, fine arts students. So I thought that was fantastic as well. They have a nice diversity as far as their artistic, educational, and cultural activities. They have a nice array of um, offerings throughout the year. They have some great performing arts classes. And I was really impressed by their um, statistic that 100% of their, um, they have a hundred percent placement rate with their students who auditioned for top tier um, BFA musical theater and acting programs. So I thought that was an astounding um, fact that yeah. the quality of what they're providing. So I, I, I felt they did um, check all the boxes in that um, area as well. Um, with respect to community engagement, they do um, reach out to underserved communities. Um, they are very strongly supportive of creating a, an inclusivity statement for all of their programming. So they really reach out to underrepresented communities. So I, I thought that was a nice um, thing to see as well. Um, they, they also, um, they've secured a grant for um, AS, American Sign Language interpreters, which I thought was really neat to see as, as well. So um, they are definitely making strides to um, include everyone that they can, even in the performing arts um, or genre, I guess to say. Um, with respect to community involvement in planning, they do have surveys. They have some nice collaborations with some really well-established arts organizations in their area. So I thought that was important. Um, I guess maybe going to what kind of Stephanie um, has pointed out to us today is kind of what kind of data are they collecting from those surveys? Um, that would be nice to know as well. But um, all in all, I thought it was um, a well thought out application and I would recommend them for funding. With the modification? Um, oh, with the modification, yes, you're right. With the modification for a balance sheet. Okay, don't, don't want to put words in your mouth, but I just want to make sure that's what I, I heard. Okay, all right. So we'll open it up to the rest of the panelists. Um, Gretchen, your comments. Um, I thought it was great, the events that they were able to offer during the pandemic um, online to keep the arts alive. And so here again, yay for them. Um, I felt also that they were very detailed and providing events and activities that they were providing for their community. And I again was um, also curious as to what sort of questions that you asked on their survey. Um, and I would um, agree with Lisa that 
recommend for funding with the modifications of their product or their balance sheet. Okay, thank you very much. Angie, what would you like to add? So I like that they put the details in around their student success after programming. Um, and then, of course, I have the same recommendation um, around the updated uh, uh, financials. So recommendation with modification. Yep. Okay. Anthony? Yeah, I'd have to agree. The I think what they did during the, what it looks like they did during the uh, pandemic and getting through it is just great. And it seems like such a great organization. So I recommend for funding, too, with the modification of the balance sheet. All right. Thank you very much. And Stephanie? Um, I agree that uh, I think what they did during the, I just want to put it out there that what they did during the pandemic was awesome. I think a lot of arts organizations had a hard time pivoting and they did a great job. Um, there's one other question I have within the um, financial, and I don't know if anybody else saw this. They, they state that they have one full-time um, staff, paid staff, but I didn't see that reflected in their financials at all. And I don't know if I missed it. So I didn't know um, within there, I just didn't know when you look at there, there was nothing, I didn't say payroll. I didn't see, I saw contracted artist fees, but I didn't see a full-time paid staff member. So that was, I'm just wondering if it was just, maybe that would be something in the balance sheet. I, like I said, I am not a financial guru, but I just did not see that. So um, that was another question I had within the financial statements that I would, and like I said, I could have missed it. So um, I just had that as a note. So I thought I would bring that up. Does any of the panelists uh, have a note of seeing anything about salary? I noted that as well. And and okay. I forgot to mention it, but yes, that okay. was something I was concerned about too. Okay, So good. would you like to add that to the modification request? Um, if that's something that I, the IAC feels that would be necessary in order, I just maybe updated financial statements in general that, in, you know, and that would be with the inclusion of full-time staff in them and then obviously an updated balance sheet. All right, so uh, to recap, we have a recommendation for approval with a modification of a request of updated financial statements, including salaries and balance sheets uh, for the panelists to feel comfortable in moving this application forward. If that's an accurate summary of what you would like, please indicate with a thumbs up. Can I add one more? Yes. Oh, okay. Within this, um, but just within the, I would love to see a little bit, not, this is not for, um, in order to be recommended for funding, but just in general, oh, I would like okay. to see more about what they, what they gain from the community as well. Just cause I didn't just before you move on. Um, sure. but like what times of conversations are you having with partners regarding impact and programming? Like what does, I mean, they have great partnerships. And so I would like to know about what together they decided within the community. Like um, how does the community help structure that programming? Do you choose what you do or do you actually, I think the difference with community engagement is that if you choose your programming and you actually then present the programming, how is the community involved in you choosing that programming within that? And I think there's a difference between that within community engagement. engagement. Um, I just like to know more of the why and the how and, um, and then within, and I want to um, second, what Gretchen said within the surveys, I'd like to know a little bit more, you know, I was going to say that about the surveys and what they, what information they attain from what they get. Cause I know they do do surveys, but what that is. So I just wanted to put that up before we moved on. But other than that, yes, your other recommendation, <laughs> I give a thumbs up. Okay. So, um, uh, we have for the three rivers music theater, out of region three, the panel is recommending funding with the following modification of updated financials, including balance sheets and staff information, staff salary information. If the panelists are in agreement to that, please indicate by raising your thumbs up. And staff, please note that the panelists have consensus for the Three Rivers Music Theater recommendation with the modification request of updated financials, balance sheet, and staff salary information. All panelists have agreed with thumbs up, indicating Lisa, Stephanie, Anthony, Angie, and Gretchen. So this concludes our fiscal year 23 arts organization support advisory review panel. Applicants will be notified of their status of their grants following the June commission meeting. If you have any questions between now and then or after, please contact your regional arts partner. 
We'll ask all of our panelists to stay online for some housekeeping after we conclude our live stream. We thank all of our participants watching virtually and all of your applications, all of the work that you do to make arts in Indiana such a vibrant part of who and what we are as Hoosiers. We hope you have a great, wonderful rest of your Monday.